On the first day of the sixth month of the second year in the reign of King Darius of Persia, God's message was delivered by the prophet Haggai to the governor of Judah, Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel, and to the high priest, Joshua son of Jehozadak. A message from God of the angel armies, the people procrastinate. They say this isn't the right time to rebuild my temple, the temple of God. Shortly after that, God said more and Haggai spoke it, How is it that it's the right time for you to live in your fine new homes while the home, God's temple, is in ruins? And then a little later, God of the angel army spoke out again, Take a good, hard look at your life. Think it over. You have spent a lot of money. But you haven't much to show for it. You keep filling your plates. But you never get filled up. You keep drinking and drinking and drinking. But you're always thirsty. You put on layer after layer of clothes. But you can't get warm. And the people who work for you. What are they getting out of it? Not much, a leaky, rusted out bucket, that's what. That's why God of the angel army said, take a good, hard look at your life. Think it over. Then God said, here's what I want you to do. Climb into the hills and cut some timber. Bring it down and rebuild the temple. Do it just for me. Honor me. You've had great ambitions for yourselves. But nothing has come of it. The little you have brought to my temple. I've blown away, there was nothing to it. And why? This is a message from God of the angel armies, remember. Because while you've run around, caught up with taking care of your own houses, my home is in ruins. That's why. Because of your stinginess. And so I've given you a dry summer and a meager crop. I've matched your tight-fisted stinginess by decreeing a season of drought, drying up fields and hills, withering gardens and orchards, stunting vegetables and fruit. Nothing, not man or woman, not animal or crop, is going to thrive. Then the governor, Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel, and the high priest, Joshua son of Jehozadak, and all the people with them listened, really listened, to the voice of their God. When God sent the prophet Haggai to them, they paid attention to him. In listening to Haggai, they honored God. Then Haggai, God's messenger, preached God's message to the people, I am with you. God's Word this is how God got Zerubbabel, Joshua, and all the people moving, got them working on the temple of God of the angel armies. This happened on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of God came through the prophet Haggai, tell governor Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel and high priest Joshua son of Jehozadak and all the people, is there anyone here who saw the temple the way it used to be, all glorious? And what do you see now? Not much, right? So get to work, Zerubbabel. God is speaking, get to work, Joshua son of Jehozadak, high priest. Get to work, all you people. God is speaking, yes, get to work. For I am with you. The God of the angel armies is speaking. Put into action the word I covenanted with you when you left Egypt. I'm living and breathing among you right now. Don't be timid. Don't hold back. This is what God of the angel armies said, Before you know it, I will shake up sky and earth, ocean and fields. And I'll shake down all the godless nations. They'll bring bushels of wealth and I will fill this temple with splendor. God of the angel armies says so. I own the silver. I own the gold. Decree of God of the angel armies. This temple is going to end up far better than it started out, 
a glorious beginning but an even more glorious finish, a place in which I will hand out wholeness and holiness. Decree of God of the Angel Armies On the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, again, this was in the second year of Darius, God's message came to Haggai, God of the Angel Army speaks, consult the priests for a ruling. If someone carries a piece of sacred meat in his pocket, meat that is set apart for sacrifice on the altar, and the pocket touches a loaf of bread, a dish of stew, a bottle of wine or oil, or any other food, will these foods be made holy by such contact? The priest said, No. Then Haggai said, How about someone who is contaminated by touching a corpse, if that person touches one of these foods, will it be contaminated? The priest said, Yes, it will be contaminated. Then Haggai said, So, this people is contaminated. Their nation is contaminated. Everything they do is contaminated. Whatever they do for me is contaminated. God says so. Think back. Before you set out to lay the first foundation stones for the rebuilding of my temple, how did it go with you? Isn't it true that your foot-dragging, half-hearted efforts at rebuilding the temple of God were reflected in a sluggish, halfway return on your crops, half the grain you were used to getting, half the wine? I hit you with drought and blight and hail. Everything you were doing got hit. But it didn't seem to phase you. You continued to ignore me. God's Decree Now think ahead from this same date, this twenty-fourth day of the ninth month. Think ahead from when the temple rebuilding was launched. Has anything in your fields, vine, fig tree, pomegranate, olive tree, failed to flourish? From now on you can count on a blessing. God's message came a second time to Haggai on that most memorable day, the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, speak to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah. I am about to shake up everything, to turn everything upside down and start over from top to bottom, overthrow governments, destroy foreign powers, dismantle the world of weapons and armaments, throw armies into confusion, so that they end up killing one another. And on that day, this is God's message, I will take you, O Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel, as my personal servant and I will set you as a signet ring, the sign of my sovereign presence and authority. I've looked over the field and chosen you for this work. The Message of God of the Angel Armies